going to show you how to interpret a lateral cervical spine radiograph in less than five minutes. Let's go ahead and start our timer. Let's count the vertebral bodies. We have the C1 ring here, C2 level with the odontoid, which is intact, C3, C4, C5, C6, and C7. So we can visualize the cervical spine on this radiograph to the level of the cervical thoracic junction. Looking at the vertebral body heights, they are grossly preserved. There's no evidence of fracture, no focal lesion. And if we are to take a look at the generalized alignment of the vertebral bodies, we don't see any listesis. And there's a normal cervical lordosis. Looking at the disc spaces, there's mild disc space loss at the C2-3 level, mild at C3-4, I'd say mild to moderate at C4-5, and at least mild at C5-6. If we look at the end plates, there's also some sclerosis, and at multiple levels, we see degenerative spurring or osteophytosis involving the end plates. The prevertebral soft tissues are within normal limits, nice and thin. Looking at the paraspinal soft tissues, we don't see any focal abnormalities. We have the spinous processes, which are intact and without evidence of fracture. Next, we can look at the facet joints. With the exception of mild degenerative changes, specifically spurring or hypertrophy, the facet joints are otherwise unremarkable. If we come down to the level of the shoulder, it becomes more difficult to decipher all of the independent structures due to their overlap. However, we can say that some sternotomy wires are present. We can also take a generalized look at the calvarium. We don't see any evidence of fracture, no focal osseous lesion. The mandible is relatively unremarkable. Visualized paranasal sinuses are clear. If you'd like to learn more about interpretation of cervical spine radiographs, check out some of my other videos. Thank you.